So, um, I don't use my metal lathe in my shop very much. It's primarily a wood shop, even though I do have metal working tools. A welder, a spot welder, a metal lathe, a very dusty mill drill, and, and cobwebbed. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, sanders and a drill press and so on. I can do metal working, but I don't do it nearly as much as um, I do with my woodworking tools. And something like the lathe, I come back and I always have to reacquaint myself with it. And one of the things that really bothers me is this jet one that I have. I always have a hard time putting the jaws back in the chuck or the plate or whatever we want to call it. Um, this part. <laughs> I'm going to call it the uh, chuck. And, um, you know, I've got a, a set of inner and outer jaws. And, uh, you know, they're sort of numbered down there like that. It says a 3 on the left-hand side. That one says a 2. The other one says a 1. And likewise for these. And if you look way down inside the, the slots there, it kind of has some numbers stamped on there, and they're at different angles. And I've worked out uh, in the past that these are incorrectly numbered. If I, no matter how I do it, if I put these in there according to the numbers, it will always end up with the, the jaws coming in off center. So um, I ended up using a center punch to punch, you know, two holes, one hole three holes and then I similarly punched one two or one two three on the jaws themselves uh, to just try to remove some of the ambiguity from it every time I come back to it and it occurred to me that other people who are occasional tool users are just generally incompetent I class myself in that even though I can do some light metal working the only training I've had in it was in high school a million years ago and just whatever I can retain or figure out on my own. I'm sure I do tons of things wrong, so machinists, please feel free to comment, but be kind. Um, anyway, I thought I would address this video to the subject of getting the jaws back into the chuck properly. Assuming that you've established that... Uh, you know, you've got a working chuck and the pieces fit at some point, they're not mismatched from some other, uh, you know, lathe or something. One of the, the techniques I've been using, and uh, I know it's probably what every machinist uses, is uh, I point the face side of the jaws up, and the face is the side that meets the piece that you're working on. In this case, it's got these little grooves in it for, I don't know, better grip or something, I suppose, but the key point here is that the curvature on these that have been machined in, the curve faces down, or the center of the curve is up, whichever way you want to look at it, but they should be concave looking from this perspective. And uh, what you want to do is graduate it from left to right. You can see here that it's going up like this, and just for sanity, I always graduate them like this so they appear to go up to the right. Now the the one that is furthest up should be number one and I've got one stamp in it and it says a one. The next one should be I've got it stamped two and it says two. Stamp three and down amongst all the dirt it says three. By the same token if I arrange uh, these guys in the same fashion. This is uh, one that grabs from the outside in uh, instead of, uh, well, the uh, the curves are still this way, whichever we want to call these, but um, you can see this one. It's concave and it goes up to the right. So once again, this should be one. I've got sort of a <laughs> My center punch jump, but that's one hole. And uh, it sort of says a one there. I've got this punch two, and it says two in there if you can see it. And this one I've got punch three, and it says three. 
Now the jet chuck I got was misnumbered. At least if I can read the numbers inside here properly it is misnumbered, but I've got it punched the way it's been working for me. So I'm going to change the camera angle and show the technique that I've been using that seems to work. And uh, pardon the dirtiness of the lay that's right next to a sanding station and the drill press, so there's a lot of sawdust around here. I wipe it off from time to time, but it's definitely not the condition that a uh, proficient and prideful, diligent uh, metal machinist would keep it in. So I'm going to zoom in on the chuck here, and hopefully I can do this and keep my fingers out of the way. So um, I find the position I've marked as one and turn it down. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. And um, I'm going to put this set of jaws in there. I'm going to find the one that's marked number one and engage the, uh, the teeth here. And if you can't remember which way to do it, remember they have to curve the same way. There's a spiral plate in here with a spiral uh, set of threads on it. They have to engage with these, so I put number one in the bottom. And I put my jaw wrench in here, and I turn it counterclockwise while pushing up on the jaw until it clicks like that. I'll do it again. I'm pushing up on it, and I turn it until it clicks in like that. At that point, I insert the, um, the jaws for number two, and this is number two back here, and number three, and if they're working freely, they should pretty much slide down by gravity. This one does, number three is a little sticky, so um, I start turning clockwise. Now, I was turning counterclockwise before until this one dropped in. Now, yeah, I have to push on this one with my thumb just a little bit because it doesn't want to go down by itself. Okay, now they're both grabbing, and I keep turning the jaws until they come together. And if I chuck up a piece of metal in there, you can see it's running true, it's not wobbling around. So that's the technique I use, especially with these Chinese-made uh, tools. I'm sure that the majority of them come out marked correctly, but this one always threw me off because of this problem with the chuck being mismarked. And uh, I'd always try to stick the, the jaws in according to the marks, forgetting what I'd learned the last time. And being unsure of how I was supposed to do it, I thought, am I supposed to put them in with the big numbers first or the small numbers first? And if you look at the threads, you can kind of figure it out, but one of them appears to be backwards the way you look at it, so it's a little confusing. Anyway, this technique works for me, and hopefully it will be of use to you as well. To help myself remember how to do the chuck the next time, I decided to... Um, print up a little label sized to fit in this position. I just used some alcohol to clean the grease off of it. This is a uh, label, adhesive label from Avery. I'm not sure what their number is. It's the uh, 60501. It's supposed to be pretty chemical resistant. Uh, it's intended for labeling like tanks of chemicals and things like that. Um, I'm going to try it out and see if it works. With the adhesive back, it should stick on there adequately.
That seems to have worked out pretty well. 